Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a dashboard web application in Python using the Streamlit library. And let's get started. All right, and so the first thing that you want to do is fire up your visual code or any text editor of your choice. And as you can see here, the dashboard working directory is comprised of the following contents. So we have a .streamlit folder, which will contain the configurations for the Streamlit web application. And for example, we have here the background color and the text color and the font type. And if we move further, we have the requirements where it's going to specify which Python library we need to install when we deploy the application. We have the streamlit app.py, which is the contents of the web application. We have the streamlit logo, or you could replace this with a logo of your choice. We have the style.css file, which will provide the necessary styling in order to customize the layout, the font type, size, and the locations of various elements of the web application. And so before proceeding further, let's run the streamlit app.py. And so in order to do that, I'm going to activate my own conda environment. So on my own computer, I have it in the streamlit environment. So I'll activate that. Let's list the contents of the folder and we're going to run the streamlit app.py. So in order to run it, we type in streamlit run streamlit underscore app.py. Enter and there you go. It loads up. Okay, so it appears that I haven't yet installed PLOST. So, so let me do that. pip install PLOST. The PLOST is a data visualization library which allows you to create data visualization easily in Streamlit. And now we have already installed it. We're going to run it again. There you go. This is the dashboard that we're going to build today. And as you can see here, the hamburger menu that are normally displayed in a Streamlit application on the top right hand corner is currently hidden. And the made by Streamlit is also hidden as well. The logo, but we, we keep this right here. And so let's get started. And so you're going to notice here that we have a total of three rows. And for each row, we're going to have different number of columns. So the first row will comprise of three columns and we're using the st metric function in order to display all of these metric values. And then the third row, we have the plot data visualization elements such as the heat map and also the bar chart as shown here. So let's minimize this a bit and go back to the code. And so let's explain the contents of the streamlit app.py file. So at a high level here, you have less than 50 lines of code. So we have here 47 lines of code. And so the first five lines here, we're going to import the necessary libraries. So we have streamlit imported as ST, import pandas as PD, import numpy as NP, import the plot library for the data visualization. And then from pill, we're going to import the image function. And so here we're going to set the page layout to be wide. So you'll notice that it will expand to the width of the page. And then we're going to read in the style.css file right here, style.css file. And we're going to read in some example data for the bottom third row here where we display the heat map and the bar charts. So the example data sets will be read in on lines 14 and 15. So we do that using the pandas read CSV function and the data are hosted on GitHub. And so here you're going to see that we have rows A, B, C, which corresponds to here, rows A, rows B, row C. So lines 18 to 21, we're going to display the contents of row A. So you're going to notice that we have a logo of Streamlit here, which is going to be right here. So as you can see, we have st.columns in order to create three columns on the first row. And we're going to call the first column to be A1, second column to be A2, third column to be A3. So in a1, we're going to show the logo. So we're going to use the image open and then the PNG file of the logo. And then in column A2, which is here, we're going to use the metric function and then we're going to display the corresponding values. So you can see here that we have wind, which is the first line, nine miles per hour, which is the second line. And then we have a minus 8%, which is shown here. And then in the third column, we have contents to be humidity, 86.4% as shown here. 
And in row B, we also made use of the st.metric function to display the various metrics as shown here. And so you could replace this with values from variables that you choose, and it could be dynamically pulled in from a data source that are hosted on the cloud so that your dashboard will be updated automatically in real time when the data is updated. And then in row C, we're going to display the two data visualization plots here. So let's have a look. So you're going to notice that in the heat map column here, we have a wider plot and the bar chart will occupy a smaller portion. So notice that we created the columns to have about 70% of the page width and about 30% of the width. And therefore this is 70% of the page width and this is 30%. So if we change this to be 5.5, five, then you're going to see that they're going to be widely equal, like here. They're going to be equal. So we make it 7 to 3 so that the heat map will be displayed wider here. And we're going to have the heat map to be on columns C1, and then we'll have the bar chart to be in column C2, which is here. So column C1, we're going to use with C1, and then we have indented code blocks here, which will display the PLOST data visualization plot using the PLOST time hist function. And then the bar chart, or it's actually not the bar chart, but it's the donut chart. We're going to use the PLOST donut chart function here. Let's change that to donut chart. Fresh it. There you go. And so let me show you what happens if we don't have the style.css. Let's cut it out and save it. You're going to see that the dashboard will look like this. And so a notable visual appearance difference is that it doesn't have a background color for the boxes here. And the alignment of the text is to the left, whereas in before we have the text to be centered inside the box. And then the Streamlit logo is also bigger here, but then in the prior, it's centered and it's a bit smaller. So we have padding to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom of each of the boxes. So let's apply the CSS styling, save it, reload it, and there you go. This is the dashboard that we have styled using the CSS code. So as you can see here, we have a couple of lines that are used to hide the hamburger menu and the footer. And how did I figure out to use this particular code here. Well, that was done by doing like this. Let me show you. I would click on view. I would go to developer mode and then I would click on the inspect elements. As you highlight the various elements here, you're going to get to see the exact name or ID of the element in the CSS. So here we have 1R6SLB0.E1TZIN5V2. Let's have a look at the code. On row one, it's going to be this one, this right here. This one is the div of this, as you could see when we highlight it in green. And currently we set the background color to be a light gray color. You see, if we make it a darker gray using the code color here, let's save it. And now you're gonna see that it's a bit darker gray color now. Okay, what if we make it black? Save it. Now it's black color, okay? And then we could change it back to the light gray color. And so here we also added the padding of the spaces to 3%. So what happens if we don't have it? Let's cut it out and save it, refresh. And then you're gonna notice that the, let me, let me close this. You're gonna notice that the spacing around the element is less than this one. So this one has spacing here to the top, to the bottom, to the left, to the right. It's centered inside the box. Right, this one has it, but this one doesn't have it. So let's add it back, save it, refresh it. Okay, there you go. Okay, so there are various other CSS elements that I've added so that we could control the relative positioning of the container here. So let me show you. Right here, the margin is currently set at zero. So if I have it zero minus three EM, you're gonna notice that, let me try again, refresh work. Okay, and so the other CSS code that you can see here was added in order to customize other aspects of the dashboard as well. And if you're feeling like customizing it further, I would recommend to just Google CSS code and then the specific styling that you want to do. And then you just add it to this particular file. 
and then you will be able to see whether it causes any changes to your web application. And so let me know in the comment section how you would intend to customize this dashboard web application further. And so the code used in this tutorial will be shared on GitHub and I'll provide you the link in the video description. And let me know in the comment section how you would intend to modify this dashboard web application further. And feel free to share some of your links to the dashboard that you have created, share it on Twitter, LinkedIn, and tag me on Twitter. My Twitter ID is the data prof, and you could find all of the links to my social media profiles in the video description. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. Please drop a star emoji so that I know that you watched this far and smash the like button if you're enjoying the content, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on notifications if you wanna be notified of the latest video, and as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.